Marine reptiles are described as reptiles which have become secondarily adapted for an aquatic or semi-aquatic environment. The oldest known marine reptile appeared over 298 million years ago during the early Permian. Mesosaurus was a small marine predator reaching 60 centimeters in length and fed on small crustaceans thanks to its elongated and slender jaw. But while the marine reptiles may have started out small, they certainly didn't stay that way. With over 200 million years of evolution, the oceans and seas of the late Cretaceous saw some of the fiercest marine reptiles of all time. But what might be a surprise to some of you, this video is about the Tylosaurus, an often forgotten and overlooked marine predator that not only coexisted with the more popular Mosasaurus, but thanks to a remarkable fossil discovery, we now know there was some serious competition between these two apex predators, and you might be surprised by who came out on top. The type specimen of Tylosaurus was described by Edward Drinker Cope during the Bone Wars in 1869. Originally named Macrosaurus proriga, it wasn't until three years later and several back and forth arguments between Cope and his rifle of Fenial Charles Marsh that we would get the Tylosaurus genus that we know today. The name Tylosaurus, meaning knob lizard, in reference to an elongated rostrum, a defining trait of the genus. The exact purpose of this feature is still unclear. While initially believed to be used for ramming attacks thanks to its robust design, a more recent study on the closely related Taniwasaurus found a complex neurovascular system located in the snout, meaning the rostrum was very sensitive and ill-suited to ramming. Imagine the pain from stubbing your toe, activating every single time you wanted to kick something. You'd probably go mad in under a week. Sexual selection or dimorphism can also be ruled out as both males and females possess this developed rostrum. Although unclear, let me know in the comments what you think this feature might have been used for. Now many of you watching may consider the Tylosaurus to simply be a lesser version of the more popular and powerful Mosasaurus, as is often depicted in media. But when comparing the many species of Tylosaurus and Mosasaurus, we can see that they were quite similar in size, with Tylosaurus surprisingly edging out over the Mosasaurus, discounting the upper size estimate of Mosasaurus Hoffmanni. A quick reminder, not every species that we see here existed at the same time, but overall Cope's rule does seem to apply. The TLDR version is, a species will gradually get bigger over time, as bigger is indeed better in nature, and we can clearly see this trend in both Tylosaurus and Mosasaurus. But while they may have similar body lengths, their density is another story. The pelvic girdles or fins are often used as an indicator of overall body mass, and in Tylosaurus, the pectoral and pelvic girdles are proportionately small and lack several complex muscle attachments in the humeri and femora bones. Combined with a reduction of total hand bones and hyperphalangy, this strongly indicates that Tylosaurus favoured an elongated and slim morphological build designed to reduce weight. The Mosasaurus, on the other hand, was designed for pure strength and bulk, with a very robust build. Hearing this, you might come to the conclusion that the Mosasaurus was the stronger apex predator. However, evidence for interspecific combat has revealed a rather smashing discovery. A recovered sub-adult Mosasaurus Hoffmanni skull was observed to possess several fractures believed to have been caused by a massive concentrated blow to the brain case. Investigating the formation and spacing of the fractures, the culprit has been argued to belong to a Tylosaurus Bernardi. The interaction involved a sudden ambush predation attempt from the larger Tylosaurus, quickly accelerating and ramming from below the unaware Mosasaurus. The type and nature of this attack is somewhat similar to behavior observed of extant bottlenose dolphins, which use their pointed jaws as sharp ramming objects, dealing fatal internal injuries to repel lemon sharks and really anything else. This violent behavior is not unique, however, or limited to simple cross species competition. The social behavior of Tylosaurus seems to have been very aggressive, as evidenced by a remarkable fossil discovery. A smaller Tylosaurus, Kansasensis, oh, oh boy, 
a smaller Tylosaurus cancernensis, measuring at 5 meters or 16 feet, had fatal injuries, indicating that it was killed by a larger Tylosaurus, measuring at 7 meters or 23 feet. The smaller Tylosaurus had four severe gouges along the roof of the skull, along with seven puncture wounds and other gouges in the surrounding area. But the attack didn't stop here. The next cervical vertebrae were found to be twisted at an unnatural 40 degrees relative to the long axis of the skull. The preservation patterns rules out simple displacement and instead indicates that a sudden and violent twisting motion occurred during life, the cause being a predation attack from a larger Tylosaurus. Reconstructing this scenario, the larger Tylosaurus quickly accelerated, ramming its victim from below along the left-hand side. The impact causing the victim's head to roll to the right, allowing the aggressor to sink its teeth into the skull roof and crush the right lower jaw. The twisting motion would then cause the quadrate to detach and the spinal cord would quickly follow, twisting and severing at the skull's base, leading to a violent but quick death. Many other Tylosaurus fossils have been discovered with bite marks matching that of other Tylosauruses, showing that the species was very aggressive and had no problem establishing its dominance. And following from this, let's now analyze the jaws and teeth of Tylosaurus. Representing around 14% of the total body length, the skull of Tylosaurus has a very strong conical shape and is filled with sharp conical and triangular teeth. Unlike mammals that have many different types of teeth, the dentition of Tylosaurus is homodont, utilizing only a single tooth design. Elongated in design, the teeth of Tylosaurus were mainly specialized for cutting large marine vertebrates, but other species such as Tylosaurus ivanensis and Goodry were optimized for piercing and smashing prey. An iconic feature of all mosasaurs is the presence of a second row of teeth located within the upper and lower jaw. The pterygoid teeth were much smaller and more recurved but likely enabled ratchet feeding, a method where the upper jaw holds prey in place while the lower jaw moves backwards and forth via a streoptic stylic jaw joint. This biting method would inflict devastating blood loss while firmly holding struggling prey in place with additional contact points within the jaw. Well adapted to warm, shallow inland seas, the main habitat of the Tylosaurus was the North American Western Interior Seaway. Here the Tylosaurus shared its habitat with a diverse ecosystem of marine fauna and many other large marine reptiles such as plesiosaurs and other mosasaurs like Prognathodon. But with the emergence of Mosasaurus Missiorensis and Conodon 79.5 million years ago, the dominance of Tylosaurus would come to an end, being pushed further north while the Mosasaurus genus expanded, eventually accounting for two-thirds of all Mosasaur diversity. During the Massatrician, the last age of the late Cretaceous, only Tylosaurus bernardi remained as the only member of the Tylosaurus genus, likely able to fend off Mosasaurus incursions thanks to its large size. So make of that what you will. As an apex predator, the diet of Tylosaurus likely encompassed almost anything it could find. Stomach contents of recovered Tylosaurus fossils have included a two-meter-long Mosasaurus, the diving bird Hesperonus, the finned Bananogmius fish, large predatory fish like Xyphactinus, sharks, sea turtles such as Protostega, a type of plesiosaur, Dolic or Hindchops, other mosasaur reptiles such as Cymolichthys, Plydastes, Plate Carpus, and Plyoplate Carpus, Ammonites, and finally Enchotethus or squids. Oh, such a wide variety of how I can mispronounce a name gives insight into the diversity of these long past oceans, showing that there were many different species all living together at various levels in the food chain, and that the Mosasaur family had many more members than just Tylosaurus and Mosasaurus. Around 3 to 15% of all North American Tylosaurus were identified to have suffered from avascular necrosis or decompression illness. Such a large percentage indicates that Tylosaurus frequently engaged in deep dives or repetitive diving combined with short breathing, 
possibly a combination of both, as squid are generally found in deeper depths, while the ambush predation hunting style of Tylosaurus would require a rapid acceleration and explosion to the water surface. An unusual find when making this video was the theoretical sustained swimming speed of Tylosaurus. Going retro, I decided to reference this 1960 paper that recorded the sustained swimming speed of dolphins, blackfish and an orca. I'll put their results up on the screen now. Now Tylosaurus on the other hand is hypothesized to have a safe cruising speed of 1.15 meters per second or 4.14 kilometers per hour, which is honestly quite slow. Although initially believed to be an angiliform swimmer, it is now understood that Tylosaurus used form locomotion, a method of tail propulsion best observed in extant fish. With the tail vertebrae forming the tip of the tail, this likely reduced the flexibility of the tail fluke and combined with any tail injuries, which has been observed as unnatural fusing of tail vertebrae, may have reduced the overall swimming speed. Perhaps this is why marine mammals took over as their horizontal tail flukes do not possess solid bone, allowing for more flexibility. While there are marine reptiles, there are none in our current oceans that encompass the ferocity of the mosasaurs. But let me know what you think of the Tylosaurus. When discussing past prehistoric animals, we can often refer to what we see in media as though it is scientific fact and discount the very real fossil evidence paleontologists have uncovered. I remember many years ago when Velociraptor was thought not to have feathers and many adult people were very offended to find out that it did. Another one is the Dunkleo osteus. Size estimates at 20 to 30 feet are not scientific and based purely on river monster logic. The actual length of Dunkleo osteus was only around 12 to 14 feet at the larger estimates. But you let me know if this video has changed your view of Tylosaurus, or do you believe it was doomed to extinction by the more successful Mosasaurus? Either way, thank you for watching, and if you made it this far, then hit that subscribe button and like the video. Any support you guys show me in the channel is greatly appreciated. But until then, I hope to see you in the next video.